I want to show you guys three awesome effects. However, this week I just really don't have any inspiration. So I'm really sorry, no Premiere Basics. Hang on, what is that? Is, is that my old effects generator? Wow! Let me see if it still works. It does! Okay, hold on, hold on guys. Let me just try and get an effect out of this. With a few tweaks and a few settings, it should work right now. Here's the first one. So it seems as though you need to film yourself from a tripod. Then hold a blanket in front of you and throw it up carefully to make the towel fall as straight as possible. Don't move when the blanket is falling and make sure it doesn't fall on your feet. Otherwise, it's more difficult to mask it out. Then walk away and take an empty shot. In Premiere Pro, drag the towel clip above the empty shot and the Timeline. Move to the frame where the towel is falling down, but still covering the talent. Now set a cut and select the second clip. Go to the effects controls and grab the pen tool. Then head over to the program monitor. Mask out the top of the towel as precise as you can. Don't mask out the ground just yet because we need the shadows of the towel and the talent's feet. Set a mask pad keyframe and use the scroll wheel to move one frame further. Then adjust the mask. Go one frame forward and again adjust the mask. Just keep doing that until the towel isn't moving anymore. And that's it. Super easy, but super fun effect. Now the next one is gonna be super cool as well. I'm not sure what it is just yet. So let me just make a few tweaks right here so that it pops out a new effect. Come on, just hang on guys. It's just glitching a little bit, happens sometimes. Come on, you stupid machine. Is that the power of love? Wait, how does it know that I need a good song right now? Wow, music really helps to keep the viewer interested, especially with mainstream music like you're hearing right now. You know, by now you guys should really know about Licked, a consistent sponsor of the channel. They allowed me to license Sigurus for my Fru Island video, which was the exact soundtrack that I had in mind. And because of that license, monetizing my video was no problem at all. They actually have over a million mainstream songs with lots more coming soon. Wait, you turn me on like a light switch. Since I started using them, my watch time has increased because my audience are hearing recognizable music in the background. My content is more enjoyable to watch and this leads to so much more engagement. Likes and comments are going up as well. If you sign up now, you'll receive a great discount with 14 days free stock music and 50% off your first mainstream track. And you'll be starting to see the same benefits that we do. New viewers are more likely to stick around. My subscribers are growing faster than ever before when they see me for the first time. They immediately feel something familiar. And again, that's because of the recognizable music. Licked have saved us so much time in looking for music, giving us more time to focus on content itself. Now it's funny, some people are confused because they don't think it's possible to use this music on every social media platform, but thanks to Licked, it is. So grow your social media right now by signing up to Licked while the discounts are still available. You can find a link in the description down below to start using mainstream music in your videos. And now let's ask the machine for a new effect this time. Come on, I need a good one. Is that a black hole? All right, so apparently you film yourself jumping with your knees towards your torso. Then walk out of the frame and create an empty shot. I also found a stock clip of a black hole on Storyblocks. Drag the clips in your timeline and make sure to have the empty shot at the bottom. Select the black hole and go to the effects controls. Then the opacity and click on the ellipse mask. Head over to the program monitor and adjust the mask so that it fits around the black hole. Then with the feather property, you can blend it in with the background. Next, we're going to make the black hole appear. Right click on the clip and select nest. Give it a name and click OK. We're nesting this because otherwise the next effect won't work correctly. You know, that's what this boombox told me to do. Find the transform effects and drag that onto the video. In the effects controls, position the black hole in your video. Animate the scale from 0 to 80 and ease the last keyframe to make the animation smooth. Of course, increase the shutter angle to introduce motion blur. Now move to the frame where you're jumping and set a cut. Move the right part of the clip on top of the black hole because we want to be in front of it, of course. Go to Opacity and click the Pen tool. Now mask out the talent quickly. It doesn't have to be that precise. Set a Mask Pad keyframe and move one frame further in time. Then adjust the mask. Now do this for around 8 frames or something. Then cut away the rest of the video. Right click it and choose Nest. Then go to the Effects Library and drag the Transform effect on the nested sequence. Next, head over to the Effects Controls. At the beginning of the clip, set a Position and Scale keyframe. Then move till the end of the clip and animate yourself going into the black hole. and set 
set the scale to zero. The animation is very linear right now, so let's open up the animation curves. Pull the levers to create a curve like this. Now the animation goes from slow to fast. Also, don't forget to increase the shutter angle to introduce natural motion blur. Next, go to the program monitor and pull the animation levers to make the talent jump in a curve. This looks really cool, but to top it off, we're gonna make the talent stretch around the edge of the black hole. To do that, find the twirl effect and drag it onto your video. Adjust the angle to your video. For me, that's gonna be 220 degrees, but that's gonna be different for every clip. Same for the radius. This depends on how big the black hole is. For me, 18 works perfectly. Finally, adjust the center point so that the talent fits around the black hole. Alright, and now let's have a look at the third effect, which is gonna be... No, I don't want Hogwarts light. Why is it keep telling me to do... Ah, the last effect comes from Harry Potter, Hogwarts Legacy. Of course, it's a big trend and you know that. Awesome. We're gonna make the talent shoot some magic like Harry Potter. First, make a video of you holding a stick. I mean, a wand. Act like you're shooting some magic power or something. You can even let someone else flash a light to make the effect look even cooler because after all, the wand is going to emit light, so you wanna make sure that it reflects back in your face. Now drag that video in the timeline and move to the project window. Click the new item button and choose color matte. Set it to black and click OK. Drag it on top and head over to the effects library. Find the VR fractal noise effect and drag it onto the color matte. In the effects controls, invert the fractal fractal noise, then expand the transform property and decrease the scale. Now go to opacity and click the pen tool. Create a small shape like this and move the mask to the top of the stick. Feather it a bunch and play with the mask expansion. Next set a mask pads keyframe and move further in time. Make the mask bigger and point it in the direction you're shooting. Now keep doing that for a few frames. Looking good. Next set a mask feather keyframe and move till the end of the effects. Increase the feather a lot to make it look like like it's expanding. Then animate the opacity from 100 to 0 when the feather expansion is happening. Next, expand the fractal noise effect and make it match the clip by decreasing the contrast and brightness. Set a keyframe and then move the playhead till the end of the effect. Increase them a subtle amount. Now to create more movement, animate the pan or Y axis just a little bit. Again, this is different for every clip, so tweak it carefully. Now it's time to give it some color. Find the tint effect in the effects browser and drag it onto the clip. Set the map white to green or whatever you like. And that looks already much better right now. Next, find the lens distortion effect and drag it below all the other effects. And from here, you want to animate the curvature so that it increases gradually. This will give a warpy effect. We're gonna add some glow to the effect as well. And to do that, find the VR glow and drop it onto your clip. Decrease the threshold to zero and increase the radius. Play around with the brightness and the saturation. That looks pretty cool now, but we still need to add some very very important details. We still need to add some very important details. Come on! God damn it, are you really gonna bail out of me right now? We're almost there, come on. Oh snap, I think I broke it. Ugh. All right, that means I'm gonna have to freestyle. All right, come on, Jordy, come on, you can do this. I got it. Drag another color mat in the timeline and find the lens flare in the effects library and drag that onto the clip. Change the lens type to 105 prime lens, then set the blend mode to screen to remove the black background. Now change the center of the flare to the top of the stick. Set a flare brightness keyframe and move a frame back. Set it to zero. Then move a little bit forward in time and do the exact same thing. That's going to create a flash of light. Now to change the color of the flare, find the tint effect and drop it onto the clip. Then change the map white to green and play around with the amount. Now to finish this effect, I found some spark clips from Storyblocks and blend them with the clip. And there you go, real life Harry Potter. Good job, guys, you did it. Wait, what, what are you saying? What, you have more effects in there? All right, oh, okay, I'll, I'll tell them. Guys, you have to check out the video here on my left for more visual effects inside Adobe Premiere Pro. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, little effects box. And as always, stay creative.